Empire vs. Strainheart. <laughs>
Whereas Train Hard is only just getting started, I believe. They're only just left the station, and I hope that they can continue that one. Ha, train, station, amazing. I made a joke. Uh, <laughs> no, <sorry. laughs> Oregon, I mean, it, it's a little bit of a balance here. I'm, I was kind of curious that Shelley got that far throughout yeah. everything. I thought that would be removed yeah. correctly from Empire because they haven't massively had a showing on it, whereas too well. Train Hard, they haven't done too well, but they've at least sort of given a showing on it. So seeing it in that sort of late situation. But Oregon, I mean, it could go either way. This is a map where famously we've seen Train Hard do some pretty out there things, especially if Amaru is still on the board oh, yes. as well. So, hey, let's see. Maybe they can eat themselves into the building for this maybe. one. Maybe, maybe. Who knows? Well, we're going to have to explore that as we get into game. Thanks so much, M and Tap. My <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to do the match announcements? <laughs> you keep going. There's nothing Ladies happening. and gentlemen. The show goes on. It's... It is time. Let's toss it to our casters. It's Tim. It's Ace and Dez. Enjoy game one. Train hard versus Team Empire. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> Unbelievable ending to that one. It's me and Quarren Tim to bring you game number one of the day. There's five to go, of course. That one's courtesy of Medics, by the way. I think as I said on the desk there, Tim, it's a good one. It's a good look for both teams. To step away from the craziness of last week, the train hard for Empire to get onto a map that I'm not going to say this is strictly stronger on compared to Cafe, but one that we've seen an awful lot in Europe and teams should be highly familiar with. This is the stability, I think, that both teams have been looking for after last week. Yeah, I agree. I think it just gives them the opportunity to settle things down, you yeah. know, in reality. And, and that's what particularly Empire, let's be honest, need. Um, you know, they need to put the brakes on. They can't be having that sort of result or performance week after week. It's just not feasible for them because they're going to find themselves in big, big trouble in terms of the EUL as a whole, if that continues for much longer, you know, looking ahead across all three stages. But we're a long way off those sorts of discussions yet. Back at hand, train hard versus Empire on Oregon operator band start coming in and no surprises with the first one train hard taking Thatcher away yeah, no surprise at all it feels like them probably the most common ban across every map I would wager at this point seeing it pretty much consistently some maps it damages you far more than others look into things like Clubhouse where hey normally we left with one of the hard breaches available at the very least and be able to do some damage but it does sting a little bit to have it taken away and I believe that is our first Flores ban of the stage now we spoke about Flores a lot last week, how for some teams you would see him picked up on maps where there are really good, strong positions. And when I spoke to teams, the three maps that were referenced were Cafe, Chalet, and Oregon. Doesn't surprise me all that much, much to see it taken away here, but keen to know exactly what the target bound was in this case, or for Empire just saying, look, we don't want to deal with this at all. Maybe they've scrimmed train hard. I don't know, but there's something to be said there for sure. Valkyrie and Wamai are going to be the final two, so the Jaeger stays on the board, but we're not going to see any heavily dug in positions with the weight with the Wamai and the Jaeger stacking up together. Certainly interesting to see that Flores ban coming in and it's going to be a fascinating one to watch as the games roll out today and across the next few weeks to see just what happens to that pick rate. You know, I'm sure we all remember the LM interview from last week where he said, you know, in his opinion, Flores right now is one of, if not the most powerful operator um, in the competitive game. So it's certainly going to be something that I see coming along. It's, it is interesting because we spoke about it before and I did raise question about Flores. You know, I won't shy away from, you know, my opinion may have been wrong and I said coming in these pro teams you know they're so good with their aim with their shots that they take drones out for fun but the counterpoint to that coming in from LM is just the amount of time and focus that it actually takes to to basically be constantly watching for them and prepared for them. So it's not something that they're necessarily being able to, you know, uh, sort of dedicate enough time to and to hit those shots. You know, when the opportunity presents itself, they'll take them out really easily. But by the time those Flores drones are getting into a dangerous position, it's already too late. They're anchoring mm. because the defenders have got so much else to do. And of course, once that drone is anchored, it's bulletproof. It can't be destroyed. What I love is the difference we're seeing in the Ash pick rate, by the way, because you might be looking at Joystick here and saying, wait, Joystick on no Ash? What the hell is this? Well, CCG published, I think about an hour ago or so, that Ash's competitive pick rate has fell 66% this season so far. And, God bless him, Russian Ewok also went out and did a bit of a dig into what all the Ash mains around the world are playing instead. And Zofia, overwhelmingly, has been about, I'd say, 50% of the picks. Others have gone towards things like Iana for Citizen Shiko and Doki last week. 
they played almost exclusively the Yana. Others have gone towards Flores. Some have even changed roles in some cases to help suit what may be better for the team, for example. But one thing's for sure, you are going to see a hell of a lot less Ash, and probably, even though you saw her a lot before, even more Zofia than before with Yana and the uh, Flores being mixed in here. It's going to be Dan playing on the Yana though. It makes perfect sense. You know, you had the Ash brought along previously pretty much to kill people. That, you know, was the top and bottom of it. She has some soft breach utility, but so do plenty of others. You know, as you've said, um, Iana has the nades, which can have a soft breach capability if necessary. You've got Zafia with her explosive grenades, breaching charges. Zafia is going to be the first kill of the round there with Joystick going out of things. But yeah, it makes, you know, perfect sense really to see Ash's pick rate drop off when there's been an impact and on her weapon because that was the big strength. It was that comfort killing operator um, that players used to bring, but now certainly looking elsewhere. And Flores, again, is a good shout. I mean, banned out here, but it's a good shout to replace the Ash because that Flores gun as well, Des, it is something, I'll tell you now, it's not bad at all. Even I'm managing to pick kills up with it, so that tells you everything you need to know. Yeah, you used to run around like a thermite though, mate. That's about as far as you normally go. So for you, any other gun must be like, wow, this actually can kill people. What the hell is this? <laughs> all about. Either way, Dirta, with this double reinforced wall, it's worth mentioning inside of security, means that there isn't that rotate angle that normally teams get, looking from dining all the way through into security, able to do some damage onto the player inside of there. In fact, I believe it was BDS who were in a similar spot when they were against TSM at SI, trying to make sure they could get the player out of security. It took a lot of work to do so when even one of those walls was left soft. We're both reinforced off here. Those angles not so easy to get. They waste about two minutes inside of security and finally step back. That Ooh. grenade comes singing through. Going to catch the second one. I do believe we'll sort this issue by the way, with the kill feed after this round. We'll let you guys know in just a second. But yes, it's Chaoxis going down there at the second in the round. Man and does his expert eyes for the time being. We'll keep a track on exactly what is happening yes, where and we will let you know. But far and then find ourselves in a four versus four. We're gonna have the H just deploy the ace deploying the Selma charge from above just to open up that wall and make pillars just that little bit less safe. Nuera for the time being holds his what? angle and he sees the drop, gets the kill. That's gonna be always going down, and it's now four versus three as we find this final execution having to come in in 19 seconds, and it's classic Empire Des leaving everything to the last 15 seconds they've got one chance at this it's three versus three as Noera does get taken down on pillars but it's all up to Empire to make this push Dan he goes down Shepard last alive two versus one Voyan Durza the peak comes out and that is time I thought the kill was going to come in but no the clock ticks away train hard hold on and that's going to be a successful first defense you're seeing just how valuable a kill feed here is now right because you don't get the kind of flash that comes up you don't get the big animation over the cards. God bless the UBUI team for making sure we have that kind of information, else this job will be way harder than it already is. But you touched on it that round perfectly, I think, case for Empire. Very slow, leaving it until the last second. They even struggled with, you know, up until the final 15 seconds, no error being inside of blue. He should have been removed from there a long time ago. No way should he still be holding the corner. He's got the support of the player playing on elbow, for example. Empire left it all with a bit too much to do. And they spoke about this being their issue last stage before we went to SI, was they would drone something, they would be uncertain, they'd re-drone it. They'd go, okay, yeah, uh, just drone it one more time. And they'd do this three, four, five times over just for one spot to the stage. They were choking themselves out in the dying seconds, but will not take it all away from train hard. They had a good two minute hold inside of security. The Empire took quite a while to figure out despite having the perimeter room control. <laughs> It's strange to see, Des. It's strange to see more than anything because it's not the Empire that we saw at LAN. And I know that there is a difference between online and LAN, but there shouldn't be a difference in the confidence of going in and trying to take a kill. If we were seeing, right, for example, if we were seeing Empire losing three or four players in the first minute and a half, two minutes, then I'd say maybe that's a difference between online and LAN yeah. because they're still trying to push in confidently, but they're losing their gunfights now rather than winning them. So they're losing the manpower. But that's not what we're seeing. We're coming into the final minute and still having four players left alive for Empire which suggests that they're not pushing in, they're not taking those fights. And it's it's straight back to that problem that I thought we'd seen dealt with mm. uh, with the performance at SI Joystick. More than 10 kills a game average. He was just like, you know, a madman going in there, taking down people left, right and centre. He was unstoppable, over 120 kills. It was, it was just ludicrous was his performance. And so it's strange to see that problem yeah. sort of feeling like it's creeping back in. You know, the whole conversation we had at the start of the last round about the Ash, the Zofia, the Flo 
Flores, the Yana. Well, Joystick is saying, mm, got killed really early in the round of Zofia. It's a bad omen. Get me back on the ash. <laughs> so he's going to be running the ash this round. You spoke a little bit around the, uh, you know, the use of the soft destruction that others have. She was during the utility meta used an awful lot to deal with like, things with shields, given she had three breaching rounds. That has been changed a bit now, but with two still on side and the three breaching rounds and being a three speed, you can understand the breaching charges. Sorry, you can understand why she can still be a popular pick at points. Just to recall, for quite a few, I think has shaken a few players who would otherwise really like to bring her along. So we'll see if Joystick can have more impact in this round than in the previous one. That drone thrown straight into a mute jammer. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting change. It does bring her more in line with Zafira, who, of course, only has two explosive grenades. So that is basically the equivalent for Ash now. And as you say, then the potential for those three explosive um, breaching charges as well. But I think, uh, you know, you've got to look at that and ask the question because Zafira also has the concussive grenades. So, again, you see when that direct comparison comes in, why now Zafira looks like the obvious choice. But for the time being, Blaz is going to be playing in behind that Goyo shield inside of Trophy. It's an aggressive hold on to Master Door there just to prevent Empire being able to push in. But they managed to clear him out oh, quite nicely. Chaoxis is going to get that reinforcement late into the round, nearly halfway through, and he's able to get it off. There's no challenge coming in from Master Door there. I love that. What they've done there is have someone playing inside a trophy behind the shield so they can very constantly just sit through that wall and contest anyone trying to run in through the door. It's another stall tactic coming out of Train Hard, the second round in a row. Sadly, they haven't wasted two minutes. They've got about a minute and a half, and they've lost the opening man. Joystick getting himself on the board finally so it has bit them a little bit but you've lost one man you've wasted about two minutes you're not going to complain about that tim absolutely not it is a good start from train hard but there's still work to be done for them they've got control over a lot of sight here and interestingly Durza has kept himself away he's in big tower now dan i think is aware of his presence and he's just going to hold down that flank and prevent him moving back great kill from dan there but as he manages to find joystick to keep that man count tight though three versus four 40 seconds left to go and empire this is the point in the round that i want to see them starting to push forward starting to think about that execute so that they give themselves a second chance I've got a feeling, Des, it's going to be another 20 seconds before that happens. Well, no, he needs to be careful. I was about to say the man was flanking him down through dining. Does go down to Dan off the cut of that one. Chaos is going down two. Makes this a three versus one. Blaz, if anyone can, he is the man, but can't bring down always. As he steps his way up. In fact, no, sorry, it wasn't always. It was Dan stepping his way up. Gets the closing kill. And Empire will take round number two. Those earlier two kills to get the ball rolling. I think filling them with a bit of confidence to make the play happen. Glad, glad, glad the Empire proved me wrong there. I said at 30 seconds, it could be another 20 seconds before they started making that final push. But no, they smelt blood in the water and they pushed forward immediately. And that's the confidence that we want. Getting onto White Stairs there, pushing up to the top of it and finding those final kills. So Team Empire get themselves one on the board to level things out. And this is already setting up to be a close game. And you and I spoke about this one before, Des, if you remember. We spoke about it earlier this afternoon and I said, I've got a feeling feeling that train hard they're a team that's on a bit of a, an upward trend at the minute the momentum is carrying them mm. sort of upwards in terms of performance and team empire unfortunately they're on a little bit of a downward spiral but i said i feel like they are coming together at a very similar point on that graph if you imagine one line going up one line coming down in terms of performance they just meet in here where i think they're at a very similar level in terms of sort of overall performance and ability within the maps and i think this is going to be very very tight I think for Train Hard after they recovered towards the back end of last stage and, you know, two out of their final three games, I believe they won and put themselves into a much better position. Not unlike last year, to be fair, when they were facing off against relegation back when they were known as Tempera. They were up against teams like Secret, there was Rogue down there, already scrapping it out for those ninth and tenth place positions. And Chaos, obviously, as we all know exactly how that one panned out. They managed to swing it back at the very, very end. And that's kind of carried on a slight upward trend, I'd say, off the back end of last stage. And we haven't seen them play in between that. Empire we have, as you say. So for them, it's a case of trying to get back on the wagon and show us what we saw at SI isn't going to be a one-off. Now, up here on the top floor, at least we've got a contest with Noera, who, again, is playing in this more aggressive position. You've seen him in the last couple of rounds being one of the first men to greet the attackers. In the round one, it was back in blue. The previous round, a little more aggressive inside of Trophy 2. So he is getting up there. For a player that has really struggled to shine so far, it was him and Blaz that everyone got really excited about. I'm really intrigued to see is, you know, why they're keeping him on these really aggressive spots and putting someone like Durza, who very regularly, every three or four rounds, is walking out with a 3k out of seemingly nowhere to make things happen. One final thing to touch on, Tim, the constant mid-round adaptability. That shield being dropped at the bottom of white looks all the way down Zulu now and just gives another roadblock for Empire to deal with that they wouldn't have droned out at the start of the round. 
Certainly does. Joystick still on that top floor clearance, looking to get some vertical right, superiority in place. And at the minute, time is being burnt for no real reason. Oh, there. No, there is a man inside there. It was just oh, his ADS scopes. blocking it out. So, I oh, know this is it. And it can happen to the players as well. You know, they don't get the silhouettes the same, but when they do push into those rooms, they can suffer the same problems. But right now, a bit of a stumbling block for Team Empire here. Not really sure how to get rid of, rid of Noera. If he can pick up a kill here, then it's an absolutely fantastic position that he's held but if nothing else he's wasted an oh. awful lot of time he does look to get some shots onto joystick he will go down but Noera finished off there it was actually Chaoxis that got the kill I think that must have been from underneath he had an angle through the hatch so he was able to support Noera but coming into the final minute it's four versus three Empire looking pretty good at the minute yeah, again, it's another minute, 45 seconds, two minutes or so being burnt off the clock here. And for Empire, you probably wage your well. 60 seconds is still a lot of time to get stuff done, and sure, but think about the limited information they'll have around the sides itself because they've spent so long on the top floor as a four- or five-man unit trying to pinch Noera out. I did think for a second that he might get the kill and then drop away immediately, but I think he got tagged from inside a pig. Unfortunate, will lose his life. However, with two now down the side of train hard, it's exactly the same as it was in the previous round. Make it three now down. Empire starting to pick up some pace here and despite the early roadblocks from train hard they're finding the kills that's going to make these executes oh <gasps> blaz that was nasty <laughs> they're the kind of shots you 20, want to be hitting 20 seconds left to go and team empire leaving it late once again side they're just applying that vertical pressure looking to use the hatch to try and support always in getting this diffuser down dan takes the drop comes in but it's an easy clean up for Durza there however Scyther does manage to make that vertical That's... position pay blast finds dan and it comes down to one versus one two seconds empire are going to lose out on time again there's he's able to just run away the last man for trainard keeps the clock ticking and wins another round based on time that's going to be so frustrating i think for empire as well you get those three kills you're in the four versus two you think man no way we can lose this but even with the top floor control even with a little bit of pressure coming in from the east they had no control of security no control of zulu no control of dining all these key perimeter rooms that you really need to be able to protect your planter that's why they went for the plant so far out to the east of the uh, kitchen site Ultimately, it's going to come back to bite you and they can just peek out from security and tap you in the head twice as you're going for it. Unfortunate for Empire. Looked like they were doing everything right, but we come back to that same conversation again where time is their worst enemy. Heading into round number four then, we're going to see a top floor defence once again from Trainhard here. They did try in round two, it was the one round that Empire have won, but Trainhard obviously feeling confident that they can get it over the line going here rather than basement, which is now available to them. They've played two rounds away from there after their round one win, so they would be able to go back, but they've chosen to stick with the top floor. Now, last time around, Empire did apply pressure from a number of angles. They got themselves established into sort of trophy armory area but also then a late push up white stairs really did cut train hard open so that's something they need to be aware about and maybe just try and keep hold of that kitchen dining small tower area a little bit longer i don't think i've ever stood in a hawaiian shirt with like fake flowers around my neck and cast before ace i've suddenly become very self-aware and it feels very weird i won't lie well, there's a first time for everything. You know how I feel almost every time I cast now, does? <laughs> Just surrounded by flowers, apparently. No finer sight. No finer sight. Now, Chaoxis, he's looking to play in and around those white stairs, as I suggested. They're just aware of the potential for the rush up there. But look how aggressive Blaz is getting here. He's right up on that master balcony door. And if that drone doesn't spot him out, which, oh, it does, it does, it sees him. I don't know if he needed to move there. It looked like the drone did circle 360. So I think that they would have seen him. But I always love those moments where defenders are just holding themselves away from drones and... Is this sort of will they, won't they, spot them out or not? Noera, he's all the way underneath here, right down in the basement, Des. He could prove to be a real nuisance. I'm not sure that he's been picked up here. And if he catches Empire on the flank, it could be a big, big mistake leaving him down there. 
Mm, I mean, they've had a couple of players out. Keoxis early on was the one offside. Then you have Blas holding at the doorway inside of Master. You've had him, uh, Noero, running around the map doing a little bit of triple two. I mean, even looking at the outlines through your screen now, there's a lot of blue figures holding down, at least it was a second ago. Two or three of them on the downstairs, but I think they've now peeled their way back up as they're aware the round is wearing on. We're hitting that halfway mark and Empire faced yet again by a new and uncertain defense. They've got the laser gates placed on the walk-in wardrobe doorway, for example, and on the trophy door. Previously, they had a shield inside of here and no Rooney laser gates positioned on this side of the map. So either they've moved more resources over, minus the shield, or they're just happy to say, look, if you guys are going to come from that angle, and we know you will because you're a predictable team, we'll deal with that. That's absolutely fine by us. Okay, Oxys, yeah, it's the impact trick there to keep the master closet wall closed for the time being, but it will then be open. Joystick, he gets one onto Voy. Noera also taken off the board during that little exchange that we've had around the minute mark there, leaving us five versus three, and Team Empire looking good on the top floor once again. Blaz still established inside of Attic, can be a power position. Joystick's going to take a little bit of chip damage from over by the rear bunks as well, but Dan manages to find Blaz, takes him out of attic and that is going to be a big step forward for empire but there's a starts to fight back from the white stairs finds one finds two and that's diffuser down now no chaosis he gets one onto cider as well always is downed and all of a sudden we're in a two versus two with diffuser on the ground and derza he is just standing over it like a sentinel right now just holding empire back dan he's inside of attic just trying to find any I... angle that he can but there's a smart and he's keeping himself out of danger here he's on the inside the clock's ticking away Way and that's the problem. Dan gets Durza, but Empire need to get moving. One down, it's all up to Chaosis. <laughs> one versus one, he finds the kill with the pistol and manages to close out the round. And that is another tight three minute round nearly that Trainard come out on top of. Oh, but Tim again for Empire. You're in a five versus two at one point in that round with plenty of time to play with, enough time to coordinate team members, get your angles set up, get back on drones, and they throw it away. In a sense here, I'm not going to say that Train Hard have like been losing every gunfight, but the majority of them, it feels like they have. Empire are walking away with, I think, more kills on the board at this point than what Train Hard have got. But because these rounds keep on coming down to time, because Empire, despite finding numbers of advantages, keep on bleeding away these advantages, Train Hard are 3-1 up. You would never guess that was the scoreline, I think, looking at the scoreboard. That is the absolute insanity of it. And they've really got to buck their ideas up here. I appreciate you're on attack. I appreciate Train Harder changing all their defences around. But you cannot be throwing away 5v2 advantages. It's simply not something you can do at this level of competition. Absolutely not. There's no better way to put it. As you know, I, I won't add on to it. I won't chase. It's just the fact they cannot be throwing away those rounds. It's a big difference as well. Three-one or two-all. It's you know, it really is a massive difference mentally right now. If Train Hard can get one more round, and let's not forget they've gone back down to the basement site, which was the site they won back in round one, pretty convincingly. If they can get this one locked down, then you're in a position whereby you're four-one down and Train Hard are guaranteed of going into that second half with an advantage so empire this round is extremely important for them now dan moves out he's going to keep himself away from that attempted peak from blaz who just moves off the window there knowing that his opportunity hasn't come he's going to rotate himself back down to stairs and this is good from train hard it's you know there's nothing wrong they three one up have that little bit of early round aggression attempt the peak see if he can get in the heads of empire even more but not over committing to it i'll give it 15 or 20 seconds and then i'm back down to sight and back down to the role that I should be carrying out. You're doing the same thing that I think every Jaeger player or defender in general will try and do in that position. You'll have at least one hold halfway up tower stairs. You kill the drone that comes in through the tower itself and then you back down to sight. You're collecting these drones as you peel your way back towards the site so the attackers have less when it comes around to actually thinking about going for a push because in that moment they have to stop and go for the redrone. Now they'll know that Blast was halfway up the stairs again. Okay, is he going to be there? Have we got to get back on a drone again? Have we got to send the Yana decoy in again once it's back up off the call? down there's lots for you to think about there i think and again just constantly pushing up aggressively picking off drones and looking on the side of empire they're down four or five so far i think it's not loads right now but give them only 75 seconds in give it another 60 seconds and then start counting how many we've lost 
Train Hard aren't giving anything up easily here. They've got Chaoxis playing over in Freezer on the Goyo. We can see there's a lot of attention from them towards Bunker as well. Now, Joystick, he's trying to move down into Freezer, so it's going to come down to Chaoxis to hold this down. But mm. for the time being, he's dipped over to the Freezer door and he's looking to apply some pressure onto Pillars, which he actually moves up to. Will be spotted out. What are you saying about pros being able to shoot into drones against? Electrical. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I wasn't going to point it out, Des, but you know, you've gone in strong there. You've got to. Chaoxis does have a lot of jitter when he shoots, in case you haven't noticed, by the way. I don't know, it's obviously his style of play, right? But he does jitter a lot when he goes for those shots. And I can't imagine it he all He jitters cases. a lot onto heads. So <laughs> that... He definitely jitters a lot onto heads, I mean, I'll tell you that. last round was enough of a case for that. all I'm going to say. But let's see then, as we break down into the final 60 seconds or so. For Empire, it felt after about 45 seconds, they got Scyther moving through the ground floor incredibly quickly. They knew that Blaz had pulled back down from tower. But here we are, a minute and a half later, still looking to get in. They find the opening kill, but if nothing else, it's nothing to be excited about from what we've seen in previous rounds. Chaos is getting one back, finally getting traded out by Shepard and Danzin clicking on heads with 30 seconds to go. Finally, are we going to see Empire do something here, Tim? Maybe not, as Blas manages to hit Scyther, and that just leaves him open to continue fighting here. Two versus three, 19 seconds, and will that clock be the enemy for Empire once again? They've got to get in and make something happen. Shepard has the diffuser in hand. The opportunity is there to potentially get it put down on the ground, but Voy is no still in a position Shotgun. to deny this potentially. He doesn't have the C4, as you say, but he is going to take the peak. Oh He's being gosh. held, but he manages oh to my find a God. Oh, my word. Unbelievable plays coming in there from Blas and Voy just to close out the end of the round. Oh, Empire, once again, a man advantage thrown away, Des. Was that 4v2? It was. <sighs> boys. Boys, boys, boys. The clock, again, is the worst enemy. The positioning of the players. I mean, look. These things fall the way they do sometimes. You had a player deep in freezer, for example, holding the cross angle into laundry, probably expecting that no one was going to step around the corner and go for that kind of spray. And they had the Yana in the right spot. But all it takes is you to crouch around that bomb chassis, get a single shot onto the planter. That Yana then has to step forward and commit to a plant. That's two, two players taken out of action incredibly quickly. Even after they traded that inside of blue and knew that that was safe, they were left with kind of... We don't really have a great option here, but anything will do. They go for it. They pay the price. Train hard again. I'm not going to say that they aren't playing well. They absolutely are. They're playing phenomenally in these final 15 seconds when Empire, a man advantage up and should be winning rounds. But Empire are letting this slip through their fingers like anything else. I can't believe the scoreline is 4-1. The thing is, Empire, they're hitting some nice shots. They are. They're winning some good gunfights. Look at Dan and Joystick, 14 kills between them inside five rounds. That's that's great going. But the point is, it's, it's worth nothing. Nope. It, it, at the minute, it's worth one round on the scoreboard. And, and that's the fact. You know, the, the history books, the results, they don't record. You know, they're not saying, oh, well, it was 4-1 at this point. But, you know, they did have 14 kills between two players. It doesn't matter. Ultimately, the points will go to train hard if this continues on. And Empire, they have to find a way to make these man advantages work for them. They've got to close those rounds out. And that's the difficulty. Closing, as we've constantly said multiple times in a row, there's there's something to be asked here, I think. And Empire will look back at this game and be like, guys, how on earth will we keep on how do we keep on letting this happen? We keep on saying time. I know it seems like a really repetitive word at this point. That's because we are saying it a lot. Because at least four of these five rounds have come down to the clock. Hopefully here there is a little bit more pace. Last time round they were stuck fighting against Noera up here on the top floor. Voigt is now going to join him up there as well. So a couple of changes coming in in terms of who's playing where. Like to see the adaptations coming out. Hopefully this time round they're aware of the vertical. But they aren't aware of Voigt apparently. Collecting an absolute freebie onto Joystick. Taking zero shots back himself. And that is one of the key fraggers in Empire. Off the round the one of Van they've had has been these gunfights and half of their strength is now gone. Dan puts the nade in, but it will be picked up by the ADS, just keeping Noera safe. It was something that we saw Trainhard try to do last time, was play behind this defence of Noera on top floor. Durza playing from oh underneath, and just that support. The Voy finds another, this time oh, on to Dan. Oh. That's going to be... Fair play. 
Fair it's play, boys. All falling apart for Team Empire right now as Durza, he manages to find a vertical <laughs> nitro as well up into Attic. And what an angle for some of the people at home to probably take away and use in rank there, Des. Just opening up the floor outside of Games Room there and able to launch that C4 up through the door and land it in that lower Attic area to get the kill. It was absolutely beautifully worked. Now, Empire, they managed to find one back and it is on to Void, but Noera is still in this top spot. He's able to take shots, get a kill onto side the four versus one. They've just been completely ineffective at moving Noera. He's used the Aruni to great effect and finally the kill comes in, but it is a problem, Des. It's a problem that always now has to try and solve. 45 seconds left to go and he finds himself one versus three with a slither of health. I'd be really curious to know why Empire after two or three rounds of the clock slipping away from them, they didn't call a timeout to have a conversation about this. This round has been much more down to players I don't want to say for no good reason, but for no good reason, peeking onto Voy at the back of Bunk. You were worried about Noera being inside of Kids and you wanted to get this wall opened up from the Thermite. He could have done so, no problem at all coming down from Attic. Voy was irrelevant in that situation, at least for the starting part of it. That wall isn't even soft here between the Bunk area and between Kids, yet they still didn't worry about just focusing on the north side and it's come back to bite them. However, always is onto something here, it feels like. Here getting himself three kills, but Blaz going to convert things out to close out the half. 5-1 to train hard. Again, looking at the scoreboard, you would not have penned this down as being that kind of game, but that's how the cards have fell. Nope, always doing everything he could there, finding a cheap kill onto the man stood on top of counter, but effectively all it did was give his location away. It just really did pin him down to the hatch and Blaz was able to move around, get the pre-fire, get the challenge and close out the round. So that leaves us 5-1 after the half and things... They're not improving much. I mean, we've got to say, Des, if we're looking at this factually, things have improved for Team Empire. They've got one round this time, which they didn't manage against BDS, but it is little consolation at this point. It's a good point, thinking about it. Across 20 rounds, Russian teams have won yep. two. That is a pretty scary stat line. Now, we'll get some bias towards it and say, sure, that was Empire on the attack on Oregon. So you expect them to go maybe 4-2, 5-1, 3-3 in a dream state, whatever. Here we get to see what they can do on the defensive side. I'm going to be watching so closely for Train Hard's time management in these rounds. They should not be leaving it anywhere near as late as Empire did. And knowing how Blaz played on Coastline last week, Give him, a, give him enough room. The man will run an absolute mile. And here is that beautiful C4 from In Kitchen, by the way. Haven't even got a standing Zulu for this one. Can just yeet it up there. The man's on the wall, takes out all the ex Kairos, takes out the man himself. Gorgeous. And they got hard stuck, by the way, trying to deal with a mute in that case. The mute jammer on the other side of the wall was the big difference maker. I'll tell you something else, Des, as well. On a different day, that Nitro gets two or three. Yep. I tell you now, because we see it so often, players crowding around that door. And after that's been hit, I bet we start to see a little bit more caution applied to, to Lower Attic on that push because it's usually double reinforced to help the player stay inside of, of kids. So I think ultimately that's going to be some of the players need to be very, very aware of because if that angle gets used and you're crowded around that door, then say goodnight, you're going to lose three. This isn't a terrible idea, by the way. Noera, normally being one of the fragging players, or at least those stepping into a more aggressive spot here, is on the hard support. He's providing that drone support along with Chaoxis. So Durza and Blaz are the ones running an absolute field day here with Voy bringing up the rear on the Twitch. Also currently sat on the drone, as you can see, in the top left corner. Three members. They've got to meet where they need to. Top of Freezer. They've droned out all the land they need. Get up towards these key locations, then straight back on the drones to start pushing their way through. Chaoxis doing a little bit more checking on the top floor in case there is a Roma lurking up there. But I believe for Empire, all all five members are on the downstairs. So Train Hard have got the run of the middle of this. They have the control they need of the ground floor on the top floor. Now let's start thinking about that time, boys. Two minutes remain. You've got to deal with the mirror window just yet. What can we do with it? Dan, just going to hold that position for the time being. We've seen some great players from there. There's one that stands out in my mind from Kendrew, if you remember, just playing inside of the bomb. Chassis Des managed to find himself three from that exact location, two into Freezer and one onto Laundry. So a real power spot for Dan there, and he could be very important as this round progresses. So he needs to keep himself alive and just take the smart fights. Don't throw his life away on a you know a silly challenge uh, over peak at this point in time. There's still a minute and a half left to go. Chaoxis is going to start opening up that 
that electrical hatch. That's going to apply a little bit of pressure. But to be fair, there's nobody from Empire playing in a position that is really going to affect at this point. It's usually more towards clearing out pillars, uh, clearing out Shaiko spot if anybody's in there. But there isn't anybody there at this point in time. Empire all focused towards Laundry and Freezer, which... Could be their undoing if they don't pay attention to Chaoxis on that rear side. Now, Dan's mirror window has been smoked out. Boy tries to get a twist oh. thrown in there to clear it, but no, Empire very alert to the potential danger there, and he's not going to get away with it. So Blaz has no option but to take the challenge onto the freezer door, and he will lose HP doing it. 35 seconds left to go, and things are looking good for Empire until the first kill goes to Durza, but traded outside, he gets one of his own. 30 seconds and train hard need to get moving nice little c4 coming through diffuser cold on the ground in the four versus three for empire 20 seconds still to play with here and they still haven't managed to get up and deal with this mirror window blaz holding tight doesn't know who's waiting on the other side side that finds one then goes down but chaoxis is in the site can he get on the flank here maybe deal with the player inside a laundry joystick loses out to blaz as he swings in there is no player there my buddy you can go for the plan five seconds on the clock they've got to make the push now shepherd in elbow they've got to know about this they step out one goes down always finding one and there's no time left it's going to be the round clock elapsing and Empire taking a much needed round win thanks to the clock some question marks to ask I think around train hards dealing with those mirror windows but around is around for Empire regardless yeah, Empire, you know, they took the chances when they were presented to them. Train hard for well throughout that, but Empire pretty uh, pretty stalwart and steady and happy in their defensive setup, I think, and were able to get that one over the line. But the big questions are going to start being asked for Team Empire now. We're coming in to round number eight. We're going to be going to dorms. We would expect this to be a reasonable site for Team Empire, but... Let's remember, train hard, they are on five at the minute. One more round, we'll see them move on to match point. And Team Empire, they're going to have to defend either dining in kitchen or meeting in kitchen, almost certainly. So that's going to be the linchpin for me. Even if they get this secondary site over the line, great progress for them. They've got themselves back within touching distance, but it's then going to be round nine. That's going to be the real key for me in this one. I said I'd watch the time for train hard. We saw exactly how much damage it did to them. I wonder if Blaz was scared about stepping up inside a freezer, by the way, and meleeing the mirror. Because, of course, now when you punch a mirror window or a bulletproof or a maestro evil eye, it breaks the glass and you can no longer see through them. So it makes it far less effective for those defenders that are sat playing behind the mirror windows. I think he was worried because he didn't want to get sprayed from north side of freezer to someone as he runs across through the smoke, gets sprayed down because they hear his footsteps coming, for example. Good chance that Empire would find a kill. So even with it being smoked off, I think they were still quite afraid of making anything happen off the back of it. There was something in that round for Train Harbour Cow just being able to get inside a supply seemingly uncontested and picking up a free kill. But sadly, that clock, it has been a cruel mistress for both teams so far tonight. We'll see if Train Hard can do better here on the top floor, given they've got one of these big execution-based operators in the Ying on side. Foy just paying his attention there to make sure that there's not going to be any peaks coming out and a few clever little angles opened up potentially from giving a view out of Armoury Stairs through Main Door there but there's not going to be any earlier challenges coming in from Team Empire. They certainly don't want to be throwing lives away. That's something they need to be... It's a, a careful balance that they need to find now. They have to have confidence. They have to go in and take those gunfights and win them but at the same time they've got to do that at the right point in the round. They don't want to come in and start throwing bodies into train hards lines of sight just yet you know they yeah. can't do that they have to keep themselves that advantage but chaoxis for the time being has got himself established at the big tower there he's looking to get that attic wall open he's on the maverick so he can be pretty self-sufficient dan he's just going to open a little angle onto armory stairs there and it's always an interesting position because it allows you to make that challenge of course coming in from trophy onto the army stairs area now danny chooses to just step up and get a little bit more aggressive but what? needs to be careful because as he moves back into his position He's overextended himself, Des and Durza, having got himself into Master Cos. It takes full advantage of that and manages to take Dan down before he can get behind that shield. Big first kill coming out for them. That's the one that you want to look for. A C4 taken off the board as well. Him out of a power position. This should make life a bit easy for them. Joystick should be able to deny this. Yes, he does. We've seen this one far too many times. And in comes the first Ying. I think here more preemptive or just to try and make Empire panic into responding. But there was no responding play coming out of the other side. He's got to be so careful if he tries to go for repelling, by the way, about these holes open up in front of that kid's window. That's going to be the player downstairs. Always, I believe it is, waiting to catch him as soon as he tries to make the push in. 
Always for the time being. Yep, just watching that vertical angle. We saw kills very, very similar pulled out in the G2 game um, last week, of course. We saw that replayed at the beginning of the stream. And Foy's just going to bide his time and try to hold on to that kid's window. But here comes the potential opening of the wall. It will be impact tricked by Joystick. And that leaves Noero with no more option. Both exothermic charges used. And Maverick is way over on the other side of the map. So the likelihood is that Games Room Wall will stay closed. Always manages to find a kill to level things up. Four versus four here. And the kills are all going in Empire's favour. All of a sudden, Scyther, Joystick finding two. 15 seconds left to go. Voy gets himself inside Diffuser. a sight through the double window and he's looking to make a play but Diffuser is down as you say and needs to be collected two versus no two but Diffuser still not in hand they're going for kills Scyther brings it back to a one versus one he sprays wildly and finds Derza for that final kill and that was ten stairs right down to the wire I really wasn't sure who was coming out on top in that final gunfight it took long enough for it to close and for Voy, that was almost a big clutch that would have got his team up to match point. But for Train Hard, this massive focus on the walking wardrobe wall or the game wall, whatever you want to call it, that's solved by a lot of teams by getting someone below, just drone out Zulu, drone out meeting, get someone inside a classroom like an Ash or a Zofia, of course there's no Ash, or someone with grenades like an Iana, get them below, toss some grenades up into game room, and chances are you're either going to catch or at the very least force away the person who sat there playing with those impacts. But Trainhard didn't bother with the vertical. In fact, that's a lie. They did. They had Zofia run down through Zulu and I think head his way across in towards dining. He got killed by always on his way through. Zero impact in the round, unfortunately, for him. And I think for Trainhard, they're not adapting enough in the mid round to help have the clock on their side. They pay the price. Empire get yet another round. It's five and three as we go towards that offsite that you were talking about, Tim. It's going to be kitchen and meeting. This is absolutely key for Team Empire now coming in here. If they get this one, it's 5-4, but not only is it 5-4, they've also got basement and dorms to look forward to ahead of them, and they've just won both of those, so in close fashion in the last round, that is fair to say, but still, there's going to be confidence there that they can close them out again, so this one is really important. Train hard, this is your opportunity to come in and get that match point opportunity. Now, defensive-wise, there's nothing too out there being brought along. Scyther has brought the maestro now we've seen the recent nerf to maestro mirror to those cameras the bulletproof cameras mm. whereby they can just be melleed and it shatters the glass now that is quite a big impact for maestro you've got to think about playing those cams in positions where it's going to be difficult for the attackers to physically get to them in order to melee them in that fashion because they become largely useless the maestro camera can still be opened and it can still zap but of course it's just left completely vulnerable then so it's either playing the first one of those that we've seen deep in sight. I'll be interested to keep an eye out for where the second one is located and whether they have the impact that we've seen in previous seasons inside of this round. So what I like for Train Hard is they are very quick with the initial, you know, droning phase, droning. Sprite, <gasps> you must be joking. No. That is perfect for Team Empire. Des, a stray nade coming in there and taking Noera down. That's the Thermite gone as well. The Exothermic Charger's now useless. They do have the option of Maverick. Chaos is able to open up reinforcements if needs be, but everything just got a lot more difficult. This just stuck a multiplier on things for Train Hard, but Blaz, he gets things moving in the right direction again with the kill onto Shepard, levelling things out four versus four. But you've got to say, Des, this already is feeling like an Empire round. There's a long way to go yet. There's a lot of time left on the cards, but Empire just feel like they're in the ascendancy of this one. They've still got top floor control. They've got man advantage. They've got the hard breach down. They're ticking a lot of boxes right now. Yeah, and Blaz, I think finding one back at least is a start. But knowing there are a couple of members holding upstairs and there is going to be a shotgun here. You've already paid the price to him at the top of white. You know he's lurking around this area and just looks away at the wrong moment. Another man going down for train hard. And what is it with this? You know there's a guy there. And he gets an additional two kills on top of the first one. Train hard looking to lose yet another round. And for all we said about Empire, about not being able to attack in the first half, train hard are showing just how difficult it might be to do on Oregon with both teams struggling to get anything out of the attacking half. 
It certainly looks like it's going to come down to a battle of who can win the most attacks at this point in time. But we could well be cruising for an early overtime finisher as well here in match number one. Of course, if it gets to 6 all, we're in a best of 12. So that would then effectively leave us in a tie. But we will have a best of three rounds overtime if that is the case. Blas going very well again, as you picked up on him before the game. Um, 18 kills it was last week, 11 kills this week. Is he going to be in that situation again? where Blas goes big, puts a lot of numbers on the board and still comes away with a loss. It's heading that way very quickly. I don't... Th I'll wait. I'll need to see Train Hard win the attacking round first because so far, okay, it's come down to a one versus one between Dirter and Scyther, for example. That's about as close as they've got, it feels like, at stages. Hopefully here, no friendly kills with grenades, for example. No more stalling out for Infinity and hopefully we see something come from it. But as you've alluded to, Empire are back on the full rotation of sites once again. That's what makes me the most nervous for the side of Train Hard. Heading into round 10 then, we're back down to the basement as you see. Always on the Jaeger, this time downstairs, late into the prep phase, so probably not going to be too aggressive. We did see um, the sort of Aggression coming from Train Hard more so on the defence. They were willing to get up on those windows, see if they could pick up a peak. But Empire, they're not too keen on that. They're wanting to keep all their bodies alive. Now, Scyther has brought along the mirror once again. Um, we didn't see it have too much of an impact last time around. Train Hard did struggle to deal with it. But at the same time, there weren't many kills came directly off the back of it. But it did potentially force Train Hard's hand in how they had to attack and where they were funneled into. So interesting to keep an eye on that as the round progresses and just see whether train hard are able to deal with it a little bit quicker or in a more solid manner this time same sort of setup as always i think we've consistently seen Voy come pushing in from the west on the twitch took that twitch drone in towards kitchen and then gone a little bit of a hunt to see what he can find the blast though and the rest of the team it's the fast moves that we've spoken about previously they always get themselves in nice and quick to a key position then it's straight back on drones for most of the team blast gets the default pulls back straight into the drones that same sort of story can be said for Chaoxis, for Noera, and for Durza, who a second ago was playing on the Gemini. Now, thankfully, the Thermite is still alive, I am pleased to confirm. We'll be able to open up at least the one hatch that looks down inside a laundry, but they did get absolutely murdered trying to push from that spot in the previous uh, attack of this site. So some things do need to change on their side. I hope to God they've got the answer. Voy is just going to hold the angle over rear stage stairs for the time being. Just very slowly creeping forwards looking to take that ground inch by inch and will be successful he can move down to the mezzanine level of those stairs without too much of a challenge but this time empire paying more attention to that rear side we saw a very good top down view last time around where they defended this and we had them all from sort of storage downwards towards laundry there wasn't really too much attention applied towards pillars and charcoal spot but this time we've got always playing up there quite aggressively and it's joystick that's going to be holding down freezer as well so empire Empire so far, they're looking pretty solid, but the first kill or two is going to be important now then. The rear side is just seen by Voy up on those stairs, but able to move away before the kill comes in. But Voy will find Joystick with a big opener on the Twitch DMR. They must know about the player playing in Shiko's spot here off to his left as well. It's always holding close on the Jaeger. Gets droned out, so now they absolutely do know. This is where Blaz and where if they coordinate this properly, could really pinch this guy out. They had the Gemini drop in, I think, just to test out what was going on. Grenade come ringing in, bounces off the wall, so not going to go to the spot they need. Kalx is basically walking into his own demise there, and always, how on Earth does this happen, boys? You're in such a good spot. They will close the kill back out the other way. Things settle in a three versus three as the smoke and the dust begins to settle. But with 30 seconds on the clock, make that 25 now. Train hard, need to get a move on. Noera pushes forward. That's the fuser down as the kill oh, comes bless. in from Shepard. It is traded out, but we're in a two versus one now. As quick kills come in, it's Scyther all alone. Ten seconds left to go. Oh, the fuser no. is still down on the ground. He's watching his angle. Surely he gets one. Yes, he does. Now, it's going it to come is. down to the kills. He gets caught in the reload. There's it's Durza shutting down the round and train hard. They manage to get themselves onto match point with a successful attack of the basement. Oh, boy. You're feeling that it can bubble all the way up to overtime here now that they found that one round. It wasn't the cleanest. It was a bit scrappy when they lost the fight up towards Big Tower and out towards Blue. I thought there is just no way they walk away the winners of this round. But the two long shots coming out from Blaz, the one onto Freezer, the one onto Always was enough to get them moving. And although he did die, ultimately that was what they needed to get them the information they needed for Durza to push down uh, 
corridor or hallway, whatever you want to call it, highway, some call it, and collect the kill off the back of that one. They hovered the Amaru, and now that the scoreboard is completely opaque, you can't tell behind it. There we go. I think that's more to scare, if nothing else. We've seen what they can do with it before, and they teased this Monty actually back in the very first round of their attacks. Not going to stick it back over to the Ana instead. I think it was playing on their minds for a little bit, Ace, around, oh, we could run this and we could do that, but... No, let's stick to what we know. Let's go back to that one again. And the Kaid is now going to join us in this round for Dan. We saw the Malusi change in action there. The Banshee gadget has, of course, been changed. For any of you wondering why was he able to just shoot that out? That's because now when you move into the range of a Banshee, it opens up. And if you shoot into the middle of it, it will take it down. So you don't have to reach it and melee it anymore. Um, so that is quite a major change to the Banshee, of course, making it easier for attackers to deal with. But at the same time, it has had a little bit of a buff itself as well. And it now will detect and work on feet. So it does doesn't necessarily need to sort of have visual sight of the whole body so could work through things like drawn holes i believe so um the banshee just the going un undergoing a few changes there malusi still reasonably popular on the defense it is a very oppressive gadget of course for the attackers if you're in a last minute situation trying to move through but i think the uh, the change that i mentioned there about being able to shoot it out has definitely been a positive one for it I could say the banshee's developed a little bit of a love for feet I mean, you could. I like that one simmer for a little while. <laughs> what I'm most excited about again is these mirrors because I think for Train Hard, they have struggled a lot to deal with them. Even with the smokes on side, they have two on Voy and two on Noera. Between those two, they can smoke these out. They can smash them. They can make them or at least render them ineffective for a short while. Sure, Empire can blind spray through smoke. They can chuck a C4 out and hope for the very best. But I think on my side, that needs to be the play point for Train Hard. That's the best chance you've got of dealing with these mirror windows is the smokes. So let's make good use of them and try and close this out here and now. Otherwise, Empire are careering towards overtime. And heaven knows, I don't know which side which team starts on, but I guarantee you whoever starts on defense, they'll be the ones walking away the winner. Oh, it's a big advantage. There's no two ways about it. We've seen the defenders really reigning triumphant at the minute, but train hard. They're not going to want to go that far, Des. They're going to want to lock this down. They don't have great memories of overtime from last week, of course. So it's going to be tight, I'm sure, but train hard will be looking to push this over the line here and now. Noera, he's looking to get himself towards the rear stage stairs. They're going to be, it looks like, formulating a similar push to last time. They did have a lot of joy with it. Get the access to rear stage stairs, push in through bunker and just apply that pressure. But always, he finds the initial kill onto Chaoxis, taking down the Zephyr and giving Empire a man advantage again. But we've seen plenty of times Empire throw away these man advantage situations. This time, it's essential that they make it stick because there are no more mistakes possible for Team Empire. Uh, Blaz once again looking to do some work with the support of Noera here inside of construction. We already saw him walk in the last round, kill two. Shepard's going to step quite aggressively onto the corner. Actually, I was kind of surprised he was going to go with that, knowing there's likely a player there behind the drone. But with that door wall opened up, he's now threatened from two directions. Always still in a power spot, being able to peek over the smoke. Can he see the man? No, but Dan can. Five versus three. Looks like Empire again on course to be able to win the round out here. But let's see how the dying few seconds go. We've seen a few too many come a little bit too close for comfort. We have five versus three now as the final push comes in from Trainard. 30 seconds left to go. Durza, he's looking to get himself relocated and it is certainly late in the round to be making big changes or adaptations. Always seems to have predicted this one quite well and he's moving over to try and shut it down. Noera, he moves in and gets a kill onto Scyther with a headshot. Four versus three, four versus two as always. As I said, moving out from underneath the stairs there, manages to get that kill and that leaves us now with seven seconds seconds left to go and surely this is an empire round as it plays out three seconds ticking by the sand moves through the hourglass and that is it train hard you didn't get it over the line empire successful down on basement once again and that is gonna be six five and we're going all the way to 12 rounds boo blaz boo saving kd boo <laughs> not trying to push and to try and make another hero play work on that one and we have the first time out being called again i was surprised in the first half we didn't see empire call one around about this time but for Train Hard, at least, that conversation is starting right now. They know they're in this commanding position. They're sat at match point. One round needs to work, and they only have one chance left. If they don't, it's going to be overtime. It's going to be that essential reset into a best of three. And I'm not 100% sure, again, who starts on defense. But I imagine whoever does will be the ones who walk away ultimately the victor, given how we've seen the attacks fare so far on this map.
Yeah, it certainly seems that way. And as we said coming into it, Des, this has been as tight as expected. There's been mistakes on both sides, that much is fair to say. But there's also been big plays. There's been, you know, great passages. We've got, always we've got Blas both going, you know, big on both sides of the table. So it really is interesting to see how this one is going to end up, how it's going to shake down. I think Empire have got the momentum at the minute. I can see this going to overtime. Mm. Depends on the site. In this case, it will be the second floor because in that previous round win, that, of course, does give you the extension to play the same site again as they did on the basement. And now they get to go to the top floor rather than an off-site like meeting and kitchen. So let's see how things shape up here in terms of the picks coming out. It's going to be that Ying stepping in once again. Now, I had question marks around Void's use of the Ying. I think every single Candela was burnt not to gain ground or to have members push forward, but more just to try and force Empire to move. And for that, for that much, at least, it was effective. But there were no cross angles being held. There was no kill lines being set up by the members of Train Hard to capitalize on that movement. And I did wonder, would it not be better to try and make use of these Candelas in an execute, for example, rather than just yeeting into a room and hoping for the best off the back of it. Because it didn't seem to be all that effective last time around. I'm hoping the conversation they've just had has given them a better idea. So this is it now, 6-5, and this is Team Empire's last chance. As we said, no mistakes to be made here. They've got to lock this one down. They've brought along the frost. Um, as you say, there's an, always an opportunity for those to catch people out in the late round particularly, so keep an eye on those positions. Now Dan is playing in behind a shield inside of Trophy once again. We saw this last time around. He's going to try to hold down that master door. It wasn't really successful. He had got himself a little bit caught in no man's land pushing into armory corridor to aggress onto the stairs there but then as he tried to move back to his defensive position he was shut down as he did so and he's actually going to relocate there he's moved the shield that's going to be available for Scyther to try and keep himself locked inside of Attic and the Frost, he's going to move away. Dan's going to play a different angle. Some might be wondering, by the way, what is this fantastic artwork coming out of Chaoxus on this top wall? Reason for it being that the one that's lower down, if you sit on the stairs at the very back of Attic, you can see a long line all the way through and essentially cut off onto any players who try and peek out just with the tiniest of head angles, meaning they can't play exposed to the wall itself. And then the little weird triangle to the right-hand side. Some don't even bother doing that. They just have a little circle. But that essentially is the point through which you will then be able to move and get yourself inside of Attic and progress forwards. Out comes the nade. That will be picked up by the ADS that has been positioned by Scyther himself and is going to help him stay in position. I don't think there was a second there, so that will clear the shield out. And that leaves Scyther at least a little bit more exposed, but all the work certainly isn't done inside of Attic yet. We've had a smoke grenade just deployed on the trophy door there, and it's sometimes done to support that Attic wall getting open to assist in moving Scyther, but it just doesn't seem like that attempt has really come through. Noera's still out on the balcony there, so I'm not sure exactly what the plan was with that smoke canister but Scyther he's going to find one onto Voy gets himself out of Attic for the time being and picks up a kill along the way now Noera he's able to start moving in the breach is open out goes another smoke canister that might give him the opportunity to try and get in and get this diffuser down but he's not pushing it just yet the shield has been cleared out forcing Scyther to relocate once again but 50 seconds left to go train hard below. they're aggressive they're looking good they've got to do a job yet though I mean that C4 is going to come singing out of there straight into the default spot in game and kill Noero when he goes to the plan if Dan doesn't kill him first at the top of white. There is still so much for Train Hard to do and we're starting to run out of time. Down goes Scyther. Four versus four with 40 seconds to play. It's all the fours. Why isn't Shiko playing? But it's Blaz to start things off with a four versus three. Three versus three as Joystick finds that kill onto Noera. And then as he moves in, gets a second onto Durza. Three versus two now. Team Empire looking to take us all the way to overtime. But Paz, he has something to say about it as he finds one onto Shepard. Shut down by that man that you picked out underneath Des. Always, is always proving himself to be a problem at this point. Empire just completely doubling down on the vertical here. Both remaining players are downstairs and looking to shut this out. Chaoxis, the last man alive, goes to get the diffuser down. He has you to know. stick it. It always can't find him and he's going to now joystick oh, comes no, in, hold the, hold the the no, find ourselves one versus one but he steps over the vertical hole always he's got to get himself up there but he has plenty of time he knows where the plant is does he yeah. no he doesn't he's got he to find the diffuser he's, he's checking the all the spots <laughs> <laughs> he still has the time he's gonna get the job done. Oh. that is a tight one for empire that was 
an exciting finish to round 12. Oh, yes. You got. You know he's downstairs. He's shot at you a couple of times as you've run around. And why you'd even risk stepping over anywhere other than exposed, exposed flooring is beyond me. But chances it, maybe got caught a little bit on the rotate as well. Fair enough, because otherwise he was home clear. Maybe didn't know there was a C4 or not in the back pocket of always, so didn't want to chance it. Either way, another really, really close round that ultimately sends us into overtime. And look at who starts on defense, Tim. It's Team Empire. For me, given how these defenses have gone, they're on the back of several round wins on the defensive side, losing only one in their defensive half. This is the perfect continuation for them because they also get to choose a total reset of sight. They go back down to the basement where we've seen them be very successful so far. Remembering that for Train Hard, their only attacking round win was down here and it was in a very close 1v1. This is where Train Hard say, right, no more messing around. The Monty's coming out. Three rounds so far played in Laundry as a defensive site for Team Empire. Round seven, round 10 and round 11. And as you say, Empire do have the advantage there. 2-1 in terms of those rounds. So they have managed to win more than they've lost. But the pressure is on now. This is where it really counts because we're in overtime. It's best of three rounds now. First team to win two rounds will win the lion's share of the points. They won't take all three anymore. Um, the three will be split between the teams, if you will. Two points to the winner and one to the loser. But those individual points can prove so, so important at the end of the stages, at the end of the seasons. It really can make a massive difference. So Empire, as you say, they have the momentum here, Des, and I think this really does favour them at the minute. We've got to remember they haven't actually been in the lead here so far. It's been all train hard up to this point, so that's going to be a big mental blow for train hard if Empire come out here and take this first defence and actually have a match point opportunity themselves. I mean, talking about the overtime point system, imagine how much of a stinker it'll be for Train Hard to lose in overtime last week, 8-6 against Rhodes, then come and do the same, 8-6 or 8-7 against Empire and only walk away with two points from those two games despite almost going the full distance. That'll really sting. But Empire, again, we keep speaking about this defensive advantage. They also need to get themselves on the wagon here after their 7-0 slapping against BDS last week. But let's see what this Monty can do. Whether or not Voy gets picked off early on, whether he does something daft and gets himself killed is the big question for me. If he gets himself into a power position and they can go for a push forward off the back of that, they can deal with things like mirrors no problem. He should be able to get up nice and close to it, drop the shield, melee it, assuming he's not about to get shot from the side. And hey, you're in a good power, powerful, uh, powerful spot where you've dealt with those mirror windows quite comfortably and should be able to work around them. Just got to watch out for those smoke canisters and the two C4s that currently sit on the Kaide and the mirror because they could be the real round enders here for train hard Keox is just uh, struggling with the blowtorch a little bit there just missing his mark whilst he tries to open up that electrical hatch but I'm sure he'll get that done any time now Blas is just on the cover for him watching the angles to make sure that there isn't any pressure applied into meeting from Team Empire but right now they are pretty much set it's downstairs waiting this for this push to come from train hard I think Voy has been now he's looking to move in on the Monty and that's going to feed a lot of information in a lot of first hand information it's basically about the freshest and most live information you get coming in out of a montagne you're pushing in because obviously that is just a constant stream of locations of the defenders but for the time being in goes that Gemini drone five versus five still coming into the final minute and both sides tentative here inside around 13. Monty's only just starting to make his move as well another grenade comes singing through but not going to find anyone there you know the spots that Empire have been playing because they've played it every single time but here comes the drop one comes in damn fine and get on to Durza to begin with to get rid of the Gemini clone straight off the back of it but as chaos starts to break loose chaos finds one the swing onto the stairs comes through from always as chaos hits the deck always a second onto blaz he's the man that you want to kill and this monty now looking very very lonely here the mountain stands tall but it stands alone three versus two and 30 seconds to play something tells me that once again there's going to be no solace here coming out for train hard they'll be going down to match point and empire should be able to walk away in a spot where they know that one round is all they need to get over the finish line Voy pushing forward, just trying to bully his way into sight. But as you say, it's not going to be an easy ask here. You really do need somebody working alongside a Montagna. And that is what Noera starts to do. But Dan, he manages to find that kill, leaving Voy all alone. And surely it's too much for him to do here. He does manage to find the down, but shut down by Dan at the bottom of Laundry Stairs. That's going to be Team Empire taking the round, taking the opportunity to close this one out in overtime. Now, I spoke about their timeout earlier on and I was surprised it wasn't used earlier. Guess when they're going to use it? 
right now before their final attack. They do not want this going all the way to round 15 and leaving it down to some craziness coming out of the attacking side of Train Hard. They're mainly built of temper, and they're a team that we know to be quite erratic and bring out some crazy things at the best of times. You don't want it to be happening now, so a good conversation about right. Remember all the things that went wrong in the first half. Our timing. That was the number one that really played off. The droning wasn't fantastic, but our gun skill, absolutely phenomenal. A little bit more pace to it, a little more team play together, rather relying on someone like Dan or Joystick to get a couple of opening kills. That needs to be the big focus in this round for me. Yeah, I would agree with you. We'll see how it plays out, of course, when we get back in. But this one, as we've said, Des, is going to sting for Train Hard after all the work that they did last week. That is going to be fresh in their memories right now. And there's a real possibility that it's going to play a big factor here. You know, if they're not laser focused on this round on the result not laser to focused, get out of it. Say, Tim. <laughs> laser for I knew you'd love that of one Des. it was there just for you I'm glad you picked up on it absolutely love it mate but I can't imagine these players are loving the stress right now knowing what it's come down to yeah sure Des, it's week 2 of EUL why would they be stressed yeah it's still stressful knowing that you're in this spot where for teams like Empire thinking about it we spoke about it on last week's broadcast Back in stage one, we were like, hey, you got stage two and three to go. It doesn't matter about the points too much now. Just get yourself settled in, ready for a good stage two and three. Well, we're in stage two now. If stage two does not go well for a couple of teams, come stage three, they are not guaranteed, but it is heavily likely or highly likely they will be the ones facing relegation come the end of stage three. So every point matters. And even in a game like this, where the difference is two points or one point, you just don't know come the end of stage three what that is going to mean for a team's chances at staying in EUL. I believe in the overall standings for EUL, by the way, Empire currently sit in 10th. That's how dire a situation it currently looks. Well, we can see the live rankings that update at the top right of our screens, Des. And with Empire in the lead, it puts them up to sixth place, joint with Trainhard, of course, um, because Trainhard will pick up one point, leaving them on two overall. Empire would pick up two from here, leaving them on two overall. But it certainly paints a bit of a healthier picture for Empire getting them in towards that mid-table if they can get the win here. But attack was not their strong point last time around, it is fair to say. It's not been anybody's here on Oregon today. It really has been a struggle for both teams to try and get these rounds over the line. So I think we could be heading for a round 15 here. The odds would certainly suggest that an empire are going to have to do something very different to what they showed us previously. Now, Blas, he's waiting at the top of freezer Love stairs. This. He's got a nitro Both in hand have. here. <laughs> they are just waiting for a big start. They're just waiting for that sound cue of joystick pushing in here. The laser gate will be cleared out for the time being. That's going to allow joystick access. We can see for the moment that Blas has just dropped himself back on freezer stairs rather than staying with that aggressive line and nitro in hand. He's actually going to drop himself back much deeper now. But Derza, he is still in security. Empire do see him, so he will likely drop the hatch. That Out goes is the so Nitro nice. and does find Scyther on the fadeaway. An absolute beauty from Durza. I've never seen a fadeaway C4 before. That was goddamn cool. Fair play, Durza, bringing down Scyther. It's the one big difference, I think, between the defences of both of these teams, by the way. Train Hards is a lot more active. It's a lot more aggressive. They get in these key positions around the map, and security has been a big focal point for them in their defensive rounds, where they look to try and progress onto Empire early to waste time to force them to panic a little bit when it comes around to the later stages of the round. No doubt really trying to press on that weakness of Empire of being slow. Durza with a second, who's rotated his way all the way from security, by the way, up to Big Tower, and now he's going to set himself up with a nice little home here tucked away around the corner i love it certainly looking good joystick he's got himself the angle there the long angle through into freezer but he's going to need to find some kills if this is the case now he's looking to move around to the door Oh. He does try to take a view, but he doesn't find it. Gets shut down, Noera, onto Joystick. And that is going to leave us now five versus two. And all is looking good for Train Hard. Always looking to fight forward from Laundry. But with 30 seconds left to go, I think there's probably a little bit too much work for Empire to do here. And I'm just thinking towards that next round, Des. Mm -hmm. Empire are going to have to defend Dorms and... They've got the wins there, but it's been tight sometimes, so it's going to be a tight and tense final round. Blaz finds that kill onto Shepard. Five Thank versus one now. Always gets killed at the bottom. <laughs> Durza shut down, and that's going to be round 
I mean, ace. You train hard and we go to 15. It's Durza. <laughs> From security to big tower, down to laundry stairs on the flank, killing three people all the way. That was one of those fabled 3K rounds I spoke about for Durza. I don't know why, but every three, four, five rounds is when he steps up and walks away with a 3K and basically wins the, the, wins his team around. It's interesting we were speaking about the PG Nationals earlier on. Oscar, one of the players playing for Outplayed in that final, reminds me of that a lot from when I used to watch him back in Nordic. Not that these players are useless in the other rounds, but the big rounds where they really step up and make themselves count is one of them ones where they have that freedom, where they find something at the very start that just lets them go on a tear throughout the round and it pulls our first game of play day number two here in EUL up to seven and seven. All the way to 15 rounds we go, Ace. I wouldn't have it any other way. These overtimes just seem to follow us everywhere. They certainly do. It is just one after another that we seem to pick up. I don't know how we have the knack of it, but they're always exciting. That much is for sure. So we're going all the way to 15 here. It's going to be seven all coming in. Empire, let's see how they have done on dorms over their defensive rounds. So they defended there in round eight successfully, defended there again in round 12 successfully. So 100% on the day, but they have been reasonably tight. Chaoxis managed to get the diffuser down in round 12. It came down to a one versus one that was won by always from underneath but it was still a tight round and I can't see this one being any different if I'm honest no, I agree. I mean, there's been a few dicey rounds that have come down to it. Think about Train Hard's attacking win in the basement. It came down to a one versus one. The round they lost here on the top floor also came down to a one versus one. And admittedly, maybe a small misplay coming out of chaos. This is the cost of the round. It is what it is. That's just how tight things get. And I think seeing how both teams have struggled on the attack and how good they've been on the defense, this feels like a very deserving outcome that it's in overtime that one team gets two points and one gets one. Who walks away with it at this point? You put your cards on Empire. As for who deserves it, it's anyone's guess in my mind. It has been so back and forth between the two teams. We spoke a lot about this artwork coming out of Chaoxes here inside of the big tower wall. Looking down Attic, same as always, no doubt going to start throwing those grenades down here. One will get eaten by an ADS, and then you're hoping, at least with the second one, he connects onto the frost mat, onto the shield, for example. It's a tale as old a time. We've seen it twice now. 45 seconds in, train hard going through the process of getting themselves safely inside of the map. Now, always, he's been an absolute nightmare out on the roam, just lurking around and causing problems. He's looking to sneak his way up the rear stage stairs. He hasn't been spotted out on the drone yet. Always, the drone has been pinged for you. The information is there. It's coming in from the default. Even. Just make sure that you don't push too far forward. I don't think he's been picked up as of yet, although Chaoxis is moving back down. So there's certainly a strong suspicion here that there could be somebody on the rear stage that's it always has to dip away and he does exactly that chaoxis isn't going to challenge that he's not going to push his position in attic is more important and i think he's confident that always has at least been scared away so that's going to allow him to get back to his work but he does have to do it without a flank drone and it'll be a bold move from always to move back there Ooh. again but not impossible we'll see as the round progresses now joystick he tries to successfully impact trick on that wall again and just as i suggested there's always is looking for a second attempt here they feel quite happy i think with this alternative rather than going below and opening up the classroom floor the classroom ceiling i.e games floor they're actually playing on the window instead and just throwing grenades into the back area but it isn't connecting onto the man doesn't matter because the wall has been opened up we've got 60 seconds to play with ace train hard need to make this happen now or it's never going to happen and there comes the opening kill they need always top fragger so far on the server at 17 kills hits the deck Chaoxis it was who found the man Void doubles down with one onto Dan it's all going wrong for Empire this looks like it's the end of things for them here on Oregon as the seal is broken in round 15 and Trainhard just put one kill after another in Toxic right. Babe Canisters come out attempts at a double at the end but it's just not enough as train hard have the crossfire have all the angles they need and close out round 15 and this time come out of overtime with two points and a victory I think despite both teams not really being able to attack throughout that game, I was more impressed by Train Hard's defense. is much more active, much more out in the map. And despite Empire having superior firepower for what felt like most of the map, it is Train Hard that walk away with Blaz again, putting out huge numbers. It was 18 kills in their game against Rogue last week. It's 17 today. The man is on an absolute mission here to say, this is why I belong in EU. Well, and my God, has he have he and the boys shown it today. But some work to do, I think, on the defenses, on the attack, sorry, Ace. 
17 kills. Like you say, great performance from Blaz. But we've got to shout always out as well. He's also hit that number of 17. Big performance from a number of the Empire players. And I think they're in a similar position to Trainard last week where they're going to be going away wondering just how they lost that one with the numbers that they put there. I think no matter what happened either way, it was such a close game that either team knew that, or they both know there are mistakes to work on. No doubt our desk will have identified a few of them as well as some things that went right. So let's go over to them and get their breakdown of the game. Thanks so much, Des and Ace. And honestly, a very entertaining game.